Well, Goenkaji, thank you very much for joining us here at the Davos World Economic Forum with some of perhaps the richest people in the world around us. Can you tell us what place does spirituality have in a place like this? It is absolutely essential that the base of spirituality should be there. Otherwise, just earning money and having no peace of mind, the purpose of earning money is not served. So spirituality will help for these people to have a base of peace and harmony within. Well, there is an old adage that comes from spirituality. Apparently, Jesus said that it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Do you think it is possible for a rich man to be a good man? Good, certainly it will be, provided they realize that the life that they are leading is certainly not a very ideal life. Because making money and having that big ego is all right just as a show to the public. But deep inside, there is no peace. I know with my own experience, every third day I have to take a sleeping pill, I have to take tranquilizers, and I know many of them, they're doing the same. Can you talk us through your own story, though? I mean, how many years of business did it take for you to realize that something wasn't right, that you wanted something more in your life? Fortunately, I was getting success in my early 20s. Early 20s, I was a very successful businessman, an industrialist, and uh, very good relation with the government in Burma. All that ego, president of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, lot of ego, a very ego-centered person. And that made me a very short-tempered person, all the time shouting on others and all that. And then repenting, I should not have said like this, I should have done like this. But that won't help. Every day something will happen which I don't like and I will lose my temper. There was no, no way out. Fortunately, because of all this, I developed a kind of migraine headache, a severe migraine headache, and there was no treatment for that. No painkiller will work. So the doctor started giving me morphia injection. Every 10, 15 days I will get severe attack and they will give morphia. That went on for three or four years. Then doctors started saying that you will become morphia addict. So we don't have any painkiller. You keep going around the world for your business. Better forget business once and go around and find out some painkiller. They won't have treatment for migraine. But certainly they will have some painkiller and you will come out of this morphia. I went around the world. Here in Switzerland, I stayed for about a month. Then Germany, England, USA, Japan, I had my own office a long time there. Best doctors, lot of money, lot of time. Nothing, nothing could help me. Not even morphia, I could come out. And when I came back, a friend of mine, who later became the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court in Burma, at that time was Attorney General, very good friend. He advised me that this is a psychosomatic disease, and here is a technique. If you practice this, your mind will become more calm, tranquil, balanced and the tension will go away so this my brain also will go away i was hesitating because i come from a very staunch hindu conservative family and here the technique is from buddhist and uh, what will happen if i become buddhist and i don't believe in soul or god all those things were there i kept on hesitating for some time later on i met my teacher a very saintly person and when he explained me that what he teaches is only morality control of the mind and purification of the mind. That's all, no other philosophy. Well, it suited me well. So I said, let me give a trial. One 10 day trial and all those problems were solved. No more morphia, no more migraine. And not only that, the whole habit pattern started changing. The anger became less, 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 less. Within two, three years, I was out of it. Ego became less, 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 I was out of it. So that, that convinced me that this is a big contribution of India to the world. India had lost it now, but 2,500 years ago, it worked so well around the world, and so many people were benefited. And now it has given result to me. And nobody questions me about my, my religion. Nobody wants me to convert myself to Buddhism or this or that. If I'm a Hindu, I'm a Hindu. My teacher has nothing to do with conversion. So I started sending my friends, my relatives, a few hundred of them, they went there, same result. So it was so clear, it is pure science of mind and matter. It has nothing to do with any kind of dogma or, or blind faith or nothing. 
and this convinced me. 14 years, I kept on my working my business, my industry, other social responsibilities, family responsibilities. After 14 years, my teacher appointed me as a teacher of this technique and asked me to go to India and share this technique with the people there. He was very eager that we got this wonderful jewel from India, and today India doesn't have it. So I want to pay back the debt of gratitude to India. So I came, and I started, and I found the result. From the first course itself, people started getting the result, and now it is 30 years. Large number of people have got benefit from it. Did it make you a better or a worse businessman? It made me a better businessman. My <coughs> turnover increased many fold. My industry is increased because the decision making power increases. If the mind is confused, then you always hesitate whether I take this, this decision or that decision. And many a time when the mind is confused, the decisions are wrong. But when the mind is calm, tranquil, then you go to the depth of the problem, you make quick decision, right decision, and the results are wonderful. There is this common conception that as soon as you have money, you lose both morality and spirituality. Do you think that is a credible argument? This technique helps to dissolve the ego. So long as ego is there, tension is bound to be there. You can't come out of the tension. The more the ego, the more the tension. And this technique helps. The ego gets dissolved, dissolved, dissolved. And now you're working not only for yourself, you're working for so many. Whatever money I earn is, of course, for my maintenance, for the maintenance of my family, maintenance of all those who depend on me. At the same time, the whole society, there are people who need money. There are people who need education. Who need... So spontaneously, these things come, not, not with the ego, but just with compassion. Look, what's the use of earning money unless I make proper use of it for others? And this helped. What kind of people do you find are following you and taking up your message? All sorts of people are coming. Businessmen, of course, are coming. Mostly now, <clears throat> when people have realized that this technique is very good for uh, executives, business executives, government executives, so a large number of them are coming. Now, it so happened in Maharashtra, two high officials, due to big strain and pressure on them, they collapsed in the office while working and died. So government was very much worried. They tried different ways so that the officers come out of the tension. Slight tension was removed by different kind of things. And then they tried Vipassana, and they found wonderful result. The officers who came, they reported. So Maharashtra government has now given an order that any officer can go to Vipassana, and they will get 14 days leave with pay and large number of them are coming now. People from judiciary, many judges have come. And the same thing, tension on the police is so much. So the police academy in Delhi, in Rajasthan, they personalize a course for them. And like this, it has started. It has started in prisons. Big change come to the hard criminals who are there, just after two or three courses. So the biggest jail is Tihar, where there are more than 9,000 prisoners. There, there is a regular center of Vipassana there. In Nasik, there is a regular center of Vipassana. And like this, there are many prisons where they have made compulsory Vipassana. We can't supply so many teachers. I have trained about 500 of them, but the demand is so much, we can't go. For a very long time, India has had this uh, position of being some kind of spiritual gem in the world's crown. Do you think it deserves that label? No, I am sorry. Because the essence is lost. Talks are there. We have high philosophies. But the real practice is lost. I know my own case. I was the leader of the Hindu community in Burma. I used to give many discourses on Gita, on Vedanta. In Gita, we say, Stit Pragya, get established in Pragya. I will give a long lecture on Stit Pragya. Coming back home, I felt so bad. I don't have a trace of Stit Pagya in myself. And I've talked so much like that. And I find the same thing with the people. Because the practice is lost. So that is why when I go to this practice, oh, this is applied Gita. This is applied Vedanta, not merely theory. They make us practice and get the result. 
this India was high in spirituality because of the practice, not because of theory. Now, unfortunately, there is more theory than practice. So if this spreads, naturally, again, India will become a spiritual leader of the world. How do Westerners take to your teachings? Oh, they accept it so easily because the whole teaching is so scientific, so rational, logical, no blind faith is involved, and result-oriented. They get the result there. So they are coming in very large numbers. Well, you've actually been asked to speak to a number of august audiences here in Davos. What did they have to ask you? Well, the same thing, how this practice will help us. Like this evening, there will be a, a talk on anger. Um, there's a big problem, uh, especially rich people like me, when I was an uh, ego-centered person, so much of anger was there. And that, that makes people so miserable. As soon as you generate anger, you are the first victim of your anger. You become miserable, and then you make others miserable. So nobody wants to generate anger, and yet out of madness, out of uh, ego, people keep on generating anger. So they want to know, is there any remedy, how to come out of it? And this evening we'll discuss about it. Well, it would seem in this day and age that spirituality has become something of a business with people who call themselves gurus, churning out tapes, videos, books, and uh, you can pay for a mantra nowadays to save your soul. What do you make of, of this whole industry? Maybe we don't want to denounce anybody. <coughs> but it is totally against spirituality, totally against dharma. Dharma cannot be a commercial commodity. The moment you start selling it, right, this mantra you have to give so many dollars, now this mantra you have to give so many dollars, then there is no more spirituality. Again, the same craving as a businessman, as an industrialist, has got craving, so also a guru has got craving, I want more money, more money. That is why in this tradition, no fees, even boarding and lodging is free. The teaching is totally free. The teacher does not get anything. All the assistants, they don't get anything. And we train people to become teachers. First we see whether this person has got a means of livelihood. Otherwise he will start asking money for it. So the whole tradition is, you don't ask anything. It's a one-way traffic. You just give. You are the giving end. People who get benefit, then certainly they feel, if they are comfortable, they feel that more and more people should get this benefit. And therefore they give donation. Many come who can't give any donation. Very poor people from Jopadapati and all, poorest of the poor in India, they are coming to the courses. They get so much benefit. They can't give anything. Nobody questions. Nobody knows even, only just one or two persons will know as to what uh, donation has come. Otherwise, there will be discrimination. A rich person has come, give him special favor. Oh, a very poor has come, discriminate, which is not good, which is not dhamma. So all those things which are going in a commercial way, teaching of dharma, I feel it is giving a bad name to the country. And finally, here we are in this beautiful surroundings with all of the world's richest and most powerful people also with us. If you had a message to give to the people of Davos, what would it be? Well, <clears throat> the same thing that a rat race of money alone cannot give you the real satisfaction, the real peace, the real harmony, which is very necessary for a human life. If you add spirituality with this, and spirituality not merely at the intellectual level, not merely at the devotional or emotional level, at the actual level, you practice, and you find a change in yourself. Instead of having anger, hatred, ill will, animosity, you will have love, compassion, goodwill. A big change will come. That will be good for you and good for others. So this uh, organization at Davos, if they join these two, it will be contribution to the humanity. Goenkaji, thank you very much for joining us. We have to. We have to.